I visited Paulding, Ohio for an embedded community experience. I found out they wanted to fill the empty buildings and make the town buildings look more attractive, even if they are empty. And that includes removing old signs from buildings that no longer host those kind of businesses. It means adding color and vibrancy to the buildings. Now think about it, your downtown is the one area of town people think of when they think of their hometown. Jeff Siegler said, expecting a city to function without a downtown is like building a home with only bedrooms. Yes, you can reside there, but you can't live there. So I did share several ideas and stories with them that I think helped them. First of all, they needed to add color downtown. We painted the streets in Webster City. For one day, one block was closed, and each business that wanted to could pay $50 for a square to paint. The funds raised went to support an arts event in the park, and each year they paint over it with white paint and start again. Why not a lighted bike path like they did in Poland, using phosphor, and it's recharged daily by the sun. It's beautiful, it's blue, and it just shines. You could add plants and flowers to some of the downtown windows and big pots along the curb area. But don't make it the city's responsibility for the flowers. Let people and groups and businesses sign up to be responsible for one pot. Then encourage them to plant lots of colorful plants, and not just flowers either. What about some tomato plants or other garden items? You could create art in the empty building windows. You can involve your students in creating artwork to cover the windows of those buildings. Perhaps choose a theme related to things you do in your community. Or organize a photo walk and invite everyone to show up with their smartphones and cameras to take pictures. It is an opportunity to have students work with volunteers to build your town pride and create an activity all rolled into one. You'll also learn the best way to get more volunteers is not to ask them to serve on a year-long committee. Simply ask them to help out for a couple hours at a time. The photos you take could be blown up to fit the windows. They could also be printed and framed and placed in shops around town and put them all over social media. I think you'd be surprised at the number of people that show up for a photo walk. Okay, now what about those empty buildings? Well, start off, with, start off with hosting an empty buildings tour if you haven't already done this. Paulding does have empty buildings and not just in the downtown area. I suggested a tour of empty buildings. It's really simple to do. Get the owners and the realtors to agree to be on site for the tour. To answer square footage and how much is it and what's behind that door, what's in the basement. And you could have a local person share during the tour what used to be there. Then you invite everyone you know. In fact, this is an event you want to invite people statewide and national if you feel like it. Now, we have heard about the concern over empty buildings with non-responsive owners. Several small towns use a vacant property register to keep track of the empty buildings. It also gives notice to the owners that the community expects the buildings to be filled in a reasonable time frame. And much of this information can relate to residential areas as well. I've added a few links for you to look at in the text of this post. And your city codes could be adjusted for adaptive reuse of empty buildings. And again, more links in the text portion. portion. Test out your idea with an empty building before you invest all your money. Brandon and Alicia had this idea that the old bank building just might be a good coffee shop, and they owned that building. They looked at prices for all the equipment, got ideas for other vendors to go into the location, and they started planning big. But how do they know it will even work as a coffee shop? I encouraged them to slow down, take some small steps first, try it out, and see if there's a product or even a market. So during the month of May, they were open from 9 a.m. to noon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. People could come by and get a cup of coffee for a free will donation. They even had volunteers that sat in the place during those hours. And that time frame allowed them to see if it's a good time for a coffee shop. These small steps are much more cost effective for a test than a trial, and it gave them valuable research into starting their business. Oh, by the way, they also used the mobile hotspots from the local library during the test phase. So here it is four months later, and now they have a little more regular hours. Yes, there is a coffee shop, and they do live music, and they've added a few things to the menu. It is still free will donation. That's working for them. So let's have a shout out for JBEZ Coffee Shop in Paulding, Ohio. 
I'm Deb Brown from Savior.Town, and you can bring me to your town, too. Just visit our site to sign up for the free newsletters and see what we're all about. Saveyour.Town, S-A-V-E-Y-O-U-R dot town. Thank you.